Let's learn how the HTML form tag works and how we can actually attach uh, an event to like a button and call a JavaScript function. So let's go ahead and create a brand new project again. File, new, project, and we want to go ahead and choose an ASP.NET web application .NET framework and let's just call it get data and click OK and we want an empty project and click OK again and it'll go ahead and create our project for us I'm going to close that window down and let's go ahead and add an HTML form right mouse click on the project add HTML page we'll call it index it makes the index.html and then we actually now want to have a form tag. Now the first thing I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and put a p tag there. And in that p tag, I'm just going to put welcome to my program. And then after that p tag, let's go ahead and do a form tag. And I'm going to get it. I'm going to indent that. Let's do a form tag. And the way you do it is you say form. And then you can put whatever you want inside that form. And let's say that we want to do an input type equals button and the text on that button which is called value will be play and then you can say and if you ever click on that button because that button is an object then we want it to go somewhere. We want it to go to the on click event handler for the button and send it to a JavaScript function. And let's call that JavaScript function get num games. And it is a function. And let's go ahead and close our form tag or our input. Sorry about that. And so let's just see what happens. Let's go ahead and run that right now. And then we'll explain what's going on. So when I run that web page, it should display my p tag, welcome to the program. And then there should be a button on there that I can click on. And if I ever click on this button, then it should send me to a JavaScript function, which there's nothing there. I'm going to press Control Shift J to inspect it. And look, it says, uncaught reference get num games is not defined so this is a great way that you can use your inspector to go and look and see what's going on with your JavaScript remember here's our elements the elements actually shows um, the HTML side of it and that says go to the get num games JavaScript function and it says sorry you don't have that and the nice thing is I could just click on that and it would take me to the actual uh, line in our HTML and show me where the problem is. It says you have never defined that reference, that JavaScript function. So let's understand this form and input just a little bit better. So the first thing we need to understand is if we're doing HTML5, the input tag doesn't have to have a closing tag anymore. You can just do that. That's nice to know. When you specify the type, we said button. But really, you could have a whole bunch of different types if you wanted on the input. Input is used to get data. You could have the input type being a button or a checkbox or uh, an image or a password or number or a radio for radio button or a submit button, which you'll learn what that means later on when you work with HTML. There's a bunch of different types of, of input that you can have for that input tag. So you might want to go Google that. In this video, we're just going to work with the button. Next thing, value. Value says, what is the text you want to display on the button? And then the on click says, if you ever click on this button, what event handler do you want to go to? And we said that we wanted to go to an event handler called get num games or a function. Now, what do we do with that? Well, we need to actually go write that function. If you're writing a JavaScript function, oftentimes we'll see that show up in the head section and the way we would do that is you'd simply come up into the head section and write a script tag and then you can say that it's a function the name of the function 
and then you specify what is that function going to do. Um, in this case, maybe we want to do a prompt, and we could say var s return value equals prompt how many games. And then we could actually um, convert that or do something else with it. We could do a document dot write s return value. But remember you saw in a previous video that on a prompt they can click cancel. So maybe we want to say if return value is not equal to null, then I want to go ahead and display it out in the web page. Otherwise, we don't want to display something. Now, let's see how this would actually work. I'm going to come right here on my line 7, and notice I couldn't click on that, so it dropped to line 8 in Visual Studio, and that sets a breakpoint, meaning when this line is executed, it will stop and come back here and talk to it. So let's run the program, see if a button shows up that has the word play on it. If I click on it, it goes to the get num games, which would be this function, and see if it stops right there and allows me to do some work with it. We'll run our program, it'll display our web page, and there's our button, and I'm going to click on the button, and it came over to here because we have the debugger going on. The debugger has a breakpoint set, and it says how many games. Let's go ahead and execute that line. Let's type in 10 and click OK. And we notice that S return value has the number of 10, so it's not equal to null. So I could step. This is how you step over the line, step into, step out of. Uh, lot, often you'll just use step over, and this works the same way that you've done it in C Sharp in the debugger. And then this button just says go ahead and keep running the web page. So I'll go ahead and click on that and it displays the number 10. So this is a way that you could have a form in HTML that gets input from the user. We put a button on there with the text play and it calls a JavaScript function and then comes up here. Now, do we have to have that semicolon here? Let's go run this one more time. I'm going to remove the breakpoint and let's see what happens if I run that and I don't say have a semicolon at the end of that statement and it works just fine also. So the standard is usually we put semicolons at the end of our JavaScript statements but you don't really have to have it on that on click event. What if I had get num games with a lowercase g? Let's run it one more time. You gotta remember that JavaScript is case sensitive so if I try to run this nothing happens. If I did a control shift J we would see that there's an error that it says get num games is not defined. And that's because when I click on this line, it says get num games is not the same as that get num games. And so that's a way that you can actually do a form with a button on it and call a JavaScript function. Um, notice that the JavaScript function is not automatically called. Other videos you've seen that I've made, if you put JavaScript right here, it's automatically executed. If I just had another script tag and we just did an alert box and we said hello, that's going to automatically execute and display the alert box. And that's because that JavaScript is automatically called. Well, this other JavaScript code this function is ready to be called, but you actually have to do something in order to call it. In other words, if I never click on the, that button, this JavaScript code is never executed. Now, what else could we do with this JavaScript? Well, maybe we have a whole bunch of JavaScript functions that we think are really cool, and we don't really want to keep them in this file. And so what we could do is we could go over here to our project, right mouse click. Let's do an add JavaScript file and we can call it my functions and we'll click OK and it breaks, makes a brand new file for us called myfunction.js 
and let's do this. Let's come back over to here. Let's cut the code out of that script tag. And while we're there, delete the script tag. Come back to functions and paste that JavaScript function inside of that external file now. So now we're saying we could go write a whole bunch of JavaScript stuff, JavaScript code, and put it in its own .js file. And then if we want to, we could go and call that function later on in our code somehow. Now the way you call that function is you have to go and somewhere in your HTML say, bring that code in. So back in our head section, we would have a script tag and we would say the script space src means source equals my function.js and we could actually keep all that on one line if we wanted to so it looks just like this so this now says for this web page we're going to automatically bring in this javascript js file and hopefully the get num games function is inside of that file. Let's go ahead and run it and see if it works. So we'll click on our button, which we'll call that get num games, and in turn, we'll go over to that external file, and that does work. So this is a way by using our script with the src attribute that we could write our own JavaScript files, .js put all of our JavaScript code in there we want to use, all of our functions, and then we can actually call those functions, and it cleans up our code a little bit. We'll learn more about functions in another video. But that's how you can use a form tag to get input, and to call an on-click event handler, which calls a JavaScript function. How to actually call a JavaScript file that has our JavaScript code in it.